My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we'll continue um, about blocks and we will see how to make puzzles um, involving blocks that you have to push on a switch. Um, so let's start with a simple switch that will activate this chest. So this tre treasure chest um, is not enabled at start and we will make this switch activate, I mean enable the, the, the treasure chest. So how to do that? If you don't remember the tutorial about switches or if you haven't seen it, uh, it is just the unactivated event on your switch. And when you activate the switch, we want to play the sound um, chest appears and we want to enable the chest which is called puzzle chest set enabled true uh, so for now no, nothing special about the block it is just a regular switch that gets activated and stay activated um, but it's good to know that the uh, the block blocks can also activate switches. Like that. And you have these two additional properties of switches. You can first say that only blocks can activate your switch. So if you do that the hero is uh, not heavy enough to activate the switch, so nothing happens here. But the block can, so you need to push a block. So just with that you can already create some nice puzzles. And the state of the switch, it's, it persists. So, I mean, when it is activated, even if you leave it, it stays activated. But that can also be changed with uh, the second property here leaving the switch deactivate when leaving. So you can do that. So right now the switch is green, which means not yet activated. If you activate it, it turns black. So it's kind of hard to see because my hero sprite is uh, partially on the, on the switch. But uh, there are a few black pixels here. And if you leave it, it will turn green again. So back to not activated. And here we are missing some codes to make the, the treasure chest disappear again. Otherwise I can, I can activate it multiple times, but the treasure chest stays here. So we can use the on inactivated event, which is very similar to this code and we will this time we probably don't need to play sound, but we'll just disable the treasure chest. So that's the first way to force your player to use a block to solve the puzzle. So let's say the, the switch activates, uh, enables a, a chest, or it can be completely something else. It can be opening a door or wh whatever you want. And here, I really need a block, and if I remove the block, the chest disappear, disappears. So that's the first way to do some nice puzzles already. And uh, yeah, on my side, I, I love making complicated mazes that involves pushing blocks. Um, but you, ha you don't have to do that if you want to be nicer than me in your games. Anyway, um, the other option is, yeah, deactivate when, when leaving, when, when we, s we just saw that, but um, what if now we want to make something more complicated and let's say we have two switches and maybe two blocks. Um, and this time, yeah, we want to deactivate the blocks when leaving. So we'll call them puzzle switch one and puzzle switch two. And we have to adapt the code a little bit. So 
I'm removing the on inactivated event for this example because I don't want anything special to happen when they are inactivated. I just want them to be. I just want to require require the both switch switches to be um, activated at the same time at some point, and then it will create the chest. But then it doesn't matter if they are uh, deactivated. Um, but it will be it will be clearer when when I do when I do it. So when you activate puzzle switch one, then before doing that, we want to check if puzzle switch two is already activated. And if yes, then it means that both our switches are activated and we can enable the chest. And similarly for puzzle switch two, we will check when activated puzzle switch two, that puzzle switch one is already activated. Let's see if it works. So here, let, let's first don't don't use the blocks to see what happens. So the switch immediately deactivates. So there is no way to make the treasure chest appear here. I really need the blocks. And then it works. Notice that actually um, yeah, well, like I said before, when, when you inactivate the switch again, the chest stays. So maybe it's a bit weird. Maybe we want to uh, add as an additional condition that the puzzle chest is not enabled yet. So a not puzzle chest is enabled. Then and the problem is that if we want to change something in one, in one function. Our code is duplicated for now, so we have to do it in in both functions, but we will improve that later. So, okay. So now it's really a one-time activation. When it's activated, it stays like, once the chest is appeared, is enabled, sorry, uh, it stays enabled. Okay, so maybe you want to to make it uh, disappear again when when we leave one of the switches. It's as you want, but for this example, uh, I will just keep it that way. And um, yeah, maybe maybe I can. Oh, okay, yeah. So we want to avoid code duplication. How to do that? Actually, we could assign the same unactivated function to both switches. Because here we are creating and assigning this unactivated, unactivated function to that switch. And then this one, which is almost the same, but to that switch. But they could be really exactly the same if we did puzzle switch one is activated. We can, we can always test both. Nothing wrong with that. And this time both functions are completely equivalent and should still work. And by the way, I forgot to also mention that you can actually, the second block is completely optional because of our de decision not to uh, disable the, the treasure chest once both uh, switches are activated. But that's really just a detail. Um, yeah, what we, want, what we wanted is to write the code only once to avoid uh, possible mistakes. And by the way, I made a mistake here. And also to make the code more evolutive. Because maybe one day we want to add a third switch or more. Um, so one way to solve this problem <clears throat> is to assign, like I said, the same function to both. So we will first create a function instead of creating it directly on our switch object here, we will create it in a local variable that we could call 
puzzle switch on activated uh, which take as a parameter a switch we could we could say puzzle switch if, if we want and our function will be well just exactly that and we want to assign this value this is variable of type function we want to assign this value here to puzzle switch dot on activated so we could do it uh, like this we don't need the function keyword here we are not declaring a new function we are assigning an existing variable an existing variable to uh, this field and same for the, the second one So this is better already. We only have the function defined once. Does it still work? Maybe I made some mistake. Yes, I have. Uh, line 15, what's wrong here? Puzzle chest, puzzle switch to local. Oh, I forgot to the, the, the function keyword. Okay. Um, yeah, so there is one parameter here. Let me just undo a little bit just to see the previous syntax. Here we were using the semicolon here. This is equivalent, remember, to one dot, to dot and, and explicitly passing the, the object itself as a parameter here. Puzzle uh, switch. So this is using the semicolon is just a shortcut. It's it's exactly the same. I still have one parameter. It's just not explicitly uh, declared here. Um, so that's why when I assign the function here, I assign I assign it with the dot syntax, which is a normal field, and I pass it. Uh, I pass a value of type function and that function actually does take one parameter. This one it looks it looked like it had no parameter but actually it had one parameter the or the, the object itself. Um, so this this should not be um, yeah this should, should be easy to understand if you are familiar with um, object oriented programming and if you're not I I would recommend to read the programming in Lua chapter um, that explains um, this. Anyway, we are we have already imp improved the code, but it's not ideal yet still, because what if we, like I said before, what if we want to add some more switches? We would need to add one condition here and one line here, but we can do better. We could do a loop. We could do uh, for puzzle or for switch in map get entities. So there is this function map get entities. You pass some prefix and it will return an iterator to all entities of your map whose name starts with uh, whatever string you pass here. So I want all entities whose name start with puzzle switch underscore and for all of them if I find one that is not activated so if not switch is activated then I return because remember here we are in the function that will be called when any any switch is activated so when any switch is activated, I check that all switches are indeed activated. And if some of them are not activated yet, then I do nothing. Otherwise, the chest appears. And we will use the same technique here to actually assign our function to all switches 
without explicitly listing all of them. And now what is really nice, what I like a lot is that our code here no longer depends on how many switches we have in our puzzle. Uh, again, I have a syntax error somewhere near four. Oh, okay, because I undid stuff. Hey, so I put my mis my previous bug back in place. Um, okay, so first let's see if that still works. Yes. And then we can add more switches and more blocks, even six if you want. And the code doesn't need to be changed. It will adapt to various puzzles. Um, there are more possible improvements. Uh, we still duplicate this line here and here. Um, more exactly, we ask the engine to search for all entities starting with that prefix uh, whenever the map starts here and also whenever any switch is activated. So that's not really good optimization. I mean, you won't have a performance issue, but it's not very clean. It's, it's useless to, to ask the same information uh, a lot of times. Unless you have some really weird twisted puzzle and, and the some, some switches are created or destroyed at one time. But <laughs> I mean, you can do anything you want, so it's, it's possible that would justify the fact that you ask them dynamically all the time, but um, we won't do it in, in this uh, tutorial, but I, I just wanted to mention that it would be nicer to to do this loop only once, maybe when the map starts, to store the results, so the list of switches in a variable, and then to just iterate over that list uh, here and here. But yeah, that's, that's just a detail. And uh, the second thing that you could also uh, do as an improvement is to move all that code somehow to another file. And that will allow multiple maps to implement the same uh, kind of puzzle here. Um, I, I'm, I, sh I will explain probably how to do this kind of thing um, a bit later, but there are a lot of ways to, to do that. One is to use um, some user properties here, and and maybe to use some to use meta tables, but that's completely uh, off topic. I, I w uh, for this tutorial, I, I wanted to explain how to program a, a simple block puzzle here. I think I gave enough information already. I hope you understand um, this this syntax here, the fact that we assigned that we assign a, a value of type function to a field here. That's exactly what we were doing uh, before with the previous syntax. Um, because whenever you create a function in Lua, it's actually an assignment it's always an assignment to a value of type function to a variable or to a field. Um, okay, I hope all of this was understandable and that you will have fun with your block puzzles. Um, please share your creations in our Discord. We will always be happy to see what, what you can come up with. Thank you all for watching and that's all for now. Bye.